I'd like to call the January meeting of the Culpeper County School Board to order. Thank you for attending this evening. Thank you for your patience and us getting started. You all arrived early, but we have to wait till 6 o'clock to get started. Uh, as it is our reorganization meeting, um, it, it falls to the superintendent to open the meeting as the board uh, chooses its leadership for the next uh, calendar year. Uh, before we do that, though, I do want to say thank you to all of our board members who serve us diligently. Uh, the time and effort they put in to do what they do is greatly appreciated, certainly by the school division, but also by our community in terms of what these folks do for us. So thank you very much. Um, uh, the roll call at this point, item B, all board members are present. Ms. Jamison, uh, at this time, please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We're on to item number two, reorganization of the school board for January 2023 through December of uh, 2023. Uh, at this time, item A, we will have the election of a chairman. So at this time, I would open the floor for nominations for chairman uh, for the school board for the coming calendar year. I'd like to nominate Mrs. Baker. We have a nomination for Mrs. Baker to be chair of the school board for the next year. I'd like to second that. Uh, thank you. No second required. Oh, oh. No second Sorry. required. Are there further nominations? Being no other nominations, uh, Ms. Baker is chair by acclamation. So congratulations, Ms. Baker. The gavel is right next to you. I would like to thank our board for their um, vote of confidence in a nomination of acclamation. And I would like everybody to know that as chair, the chair and the vice chair, any one of these ladies on this board are as capable of sitting in this chair and doing the exact same. They are all wonderful people who are very experienced and would do an excellent job as well. And with that, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Let's see. Item B, the election of the vice chair. Is there a nomination for vice chair? Madam Chairwoman, I would like to nominate Betsy Smith for the vice chair position for the coming year, please. Thank you, Ms. Disley. Are there any other nominations for vice chair? I'd like to nominate Barbie Brown. Thank you, Ms. Hutchins. We have two nominations for vice chair, Mrs. Betsy Smith and Mrs. Barbara Brown, Miss Barbara Brown. Will Mrs. Smith, is all in favor of Mrs. Smith, please signify by raising your hand for Mrs. Smith. Mrs. Smith has four votes for vice chair. All, in, all of who vote for Ms. Brown, please raise your hand. There are three votes for Ms. Brown. The new vice chair for this calendar year is Mrs. Betsy Smith. Congratulations, Mrs. Smith. <laughs> Item C, the approval of the clerk and deputy clerk, Mr. Jeffrey Shomo is clerk, and Mrs. Pearl Jameson, Jameson is our deputy clerk. Is there a motion to approve the clerk and the deputy clerk? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Item D, the approval of the designee of the division superintendent to attend meetings of the school board in the absence of the superintendent, Mrs. Michelle Metzger. Is there a motion for Mrs. Metzger? So, so moved. moved. 
Second. Discussion? Ms. Burnett mo made the motion and Ms. Desolet second. No discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Motion carried. E, approval of designee to sign documents in the absence of the superintendent, Mr. Jeffrey Shomo, Dr. Russell Halk, and Mr. Robert T. in III. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Item F, adoption of the procedure for conducting meetings, Robert's Rules. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Since uh, I go last in any discussion, I would like to say that um, if this motion passes and we do do parliamentary procedure with Robert's Rules, I have been advised in the past that I need to improve on something. And um, no kidding, <laughs> really. <laughs> so um, what I would like to say is, and this has no problem with any of my board members, but when we speak or when we discuss, we are going to speak one person at a time. And each person must be recognized by the chair mm -hmm. before they speak. That way, we all know what's being said, you all know what's being said, and anyone out on TV also knows. So that is the only thing that I think um, I may gavel, not loud, but I might, if we don't um, follow those rules, that one at a time. And now is there no other, no other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. And G, approval of the Culpeper County School Board meeting calendar and the committee schedule. So moved. Second. Discussion? I'd like to ask the question, if we don't have our committee assignments yet, can this be part of an agenda the next meeting? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know what a committee you're on, then you don't know if the meeting conflicts or you think there should be some other way of doing it. Um, so that's just my thought. Turn your thing on. Hi there. <laughs> Any other? I think I might be able to answer that. This is just a schedule of when our, our committees, the days and the times. The actual assignment to committees will be at the work session. And at that time, before then, after this meeting, if everyone would please write down what you're on as far as standing committee and advisory committees, and then also include what you might like to be on or what you would prefer, what your preference is. We will try to make sure that everybody gets something that they are interested in or would like to try to do. So, but right now, all we're doing is saying that certain meetings meet at certain days on certain times, and that could be changed later. But for January, right. you okay. are going to maintain nice. your same <laughs> meeting schedule. And everything will change in February then. Everybody okay with that? We have a motion, we have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. The presentation and recognitions. These are our ZAP awards. And our ZAP award, for those who are new to this particular meeting, um, the ZAP is, it stands for a Zealous Appreciation for Positive Performance. And the vice chair has come down and she is going to give the um, certificate to our first ZAP award, which will go to Mr. Christian Sodaholm who is uh, the 2022 VHSL All-State Theater Outstanding Actor. And his sponsor is Mrs. Mitchell. Uh, 
And before you go, Ms. Mitchell, would you tell us a little bit about what that means to be the outstanding actor? The, uh, go to the podium. To the podium. Appreciate it. Well, thank you so much again for having us here today to honor uh, Christian. We're really proud of his journey throughout our VHSL uh, journey this year. Not only was Christian recognized at the state level, which is why he's getting this award, uh, he was also recognized as best actor at the district level of our VHSL Theater One Act competition and the regional level. So this is a three-time best actor award winner, and that's out of all of the productions we compete against. Um, roughly eight schools at the first level, four other four schools combined at the next level, and again, at the state level, there are other four other schools there too. So out of all of those schools, Christian won Best Actor at every single competition that we went to. So we're really proud of him, and thank you again for all of your hard work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next SAP award goes to the 2022 All State Champion or Competition Cheer Team. The second team, Summer Kuntz, and the sponsor, Melissa Inamorato. And Mrs. Inamoranto, would you tell us a little bit about the process? Yeah, I don't need the microphone. Uh, TV. I'm, oh, TV. TV. Okay. Sorry. So Summer, there's a lot to say about Summer. She's an awesome academic student and an awesome athlete, and we are going to miss her so much next year. Just to touch on some of her awards, um, she was All-American this year at UCA camp. She is first team All-District first team all region and second team all state. And on top of that, she was our game day leader multiple times during sideline and she was our competition cheerleading captain. Thank you so much. That concludes our ZAP awards for tonight and we will move on to delegations. No, no, oh, I'm so sorry. It is not on to you, Mr. Glick. It's you guys. The kids have been waiting so long. I turned the page. I know. Well, they've been here so long. This is our Farmington Elementary School. Mr. Glick is our principal. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure to stand before you for the first time as the principal of Farmington Elementary. Farmington has always held a special place in my heart because I worked there as an ITRT. And more importantly, both of my children began their elementary education. My son Liam enjoyed Farmington so much that he begged me to return to the school when I became assistant principal. And yes, that's me about nine years ago and 30 pounds lighter. Um, what has always struck me as special about Farmington is the sense of family and community the school has. It has been my theory for years that the fact that our students start kindergarten at the end of our main hall allows everyone in the building to see the kids grow and mature on a daily basis and yearly as the students make their way to the other end of the school each day and throughout the years. Our teachers also see each other with a regularity that doesn't happen when the school is organized by pods. When I would attend events as a parent, I was always impressed by how well the teachers knew the students, knew their parents, and how many families would be there. Unfortunately, and I hope that we will soon get to stop saying this, the pandemic changed this dynamic. For a year, we were isolated from our students, their parents, and to a degree, each other. The next year when we returned, we started the year with restrictions on distance and mass. While the restrictions were gradually lifted, we still did not have all the events we once had, nor were we able to be as welcoming as we wanted to be. This year, we have set about re-engaging with our students and community. We started the year with popsicles on the playground at the Meet the Teacher event. 
We partnered with our PTO for a trunk or treat in October and a family movie night in December. On March 2nd, we will be have a STEAM night at the school for all of our families. Mrs. Constantini and I have also expanded our monthly Fantastic Fox program to not only include a certificate and a mention on the WFES news program, but when possible, we are personally delivering yard signs to families to make the parents part of the recognition. An often overlooked function of schools are the opportunities they can provide students outside the classroom. This year, students in fourth and fifth grade have the ability to join our music, art, and book, book and Math 24 clubs that meet during the day, once a week, during recess, or in the case of Math 24, lunch. Our music club has performed with other students across the district, have opened up the EVHS band show at our school, and will shortly perform for you. The art club weekly explores art, including how to spin yarn, decorate cakes, and they will be designing and painting a mural in our conference room. Math 24 stu students will vie with each other for spots in the county tournament this spring. We also have several after-school clubs and activities for students. In the, fall, in the fall, we had Girls on the Run team. Fourth and fifth grade students have the opportunity to participate in SCA, and they just recently concluded a canned food drive. We have students staying late for Spelling Bee Club, Garden Club, and soon a Math Crazy Eights Club for students in grades K through 2. I'd like to use this forum to thank the Central Office for partnering with community members to provide our students with trips to Verdun, State Climb, and Airfest. Laura Hoover for helping to find funding for school, after school clubs through ESSER 3 money. Our PTO for always looking for opportunities to help our staff and students. Our wonderful parents, some who have brought their children here to perform tonight. And finally, our fantastic staff who make everything possible at Farmington. Hopefully, we can work all together to expand these opportunities in the future. Without further ado, I want to have our music teacher, Mr. Mast Marino, bring his students up, and they're going to perform a couple short songs for you.
Martin. Thank you very much. I want to thank the students again and their parents. Very nice job. Great singing. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Are there any questions or comments for Mr. Glick? Ms. Hutchinson? Ms. Hutchins? Mr. Glick, Garden Club, what are we growing? Good one. And they were. Garden Club, what are we growing? Of all nights. Uh, we have spinach right now. We're oh. trying to plant some pansies, but we have a lovely groundhog that helps them. Oh. Grow. So and veggies, I, I, more veggies than flowers. More, more veggies than flowers. Okay. And I saw a student taking home a bunch of hot peppers one day. Wonderful, wonderful. So it was good to see. The music was fantastic. Thank, Thank you so very much. Yeah, those, those kids give up their recess once a week just to practice and take part in it. So it's a great thing. Well, that's special when you give up recess. Mm -hmm, it is. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mr. You're welcome. Thank, Thank, you Thank you all for your time. Now we will jump ahead to delegations. Before we call our one person that signed up, I do have to read this one statement. Persons may present ideas or concerns regarding Culpeper County Public Schools. There will be no action taken by the board at this meeting, and such items will be referred to the appropriate administrators for future information and research. Personalities and behaviors of employees are not to be presented during this period but are to be reported to the employee's immediate supervisor. Each speaker shall limit his or her remarks to three minutes. No speaker shall be permitted to allocate any portion of his or her speaking time to another speaker. No speaker may address the board more than once per meeting. Delegations wishing to address the board are requested to sign in prior to the meeting with their names, address, and topic. A sheet for this purpose is provided at the entrance to the meeting room. And this is in reference to our policy, KDBR1, BDDH, BR1. <laughs> and our one delegation whose delegation is set up tonight is Mr. Green from Salem. Mr. Green. I didn't think I needed my age, but what a scene of what it has. Uh, before I read this, I want to try to introduce myself to you a little bit. My name is Larry Green. I'm from the Salem District. My family's been in Culpeper since 1800. My father was sheriff in Culpeper and from the late 50s through the early 60s. Uh, some of you are probably familiar with Sheriff Peters. That was his deputy. And I can tell you some good stories about that too, but that's a different thing. Uh, I come before this board tonight having gone to Culpeper High School and not finished but later finished my education. I've had two successful businesses, one in retail and one in transportation. So it gives me a appreciation for an education. And I look at today, the kids on the street that are coming to these colleges, schools, that have plenty of book sense, and I'm off my topic right now a little bit, and, and I, it worries me deeply. So I'll try to get back to my presentation to you. Uh, I want to thank you for allowing me to address you. In life, I look at history as, and life experiences for my lessons in life. I guess you call it school, school of hard knocks. When I went to Culpeper High School, half the pickups in the parking lot had rifles hanging in the back of the window. I had a car, so mine was in the back seat. We all went hunting after class. Now, I am not a pro proponent of guns in school. Please do not mislead that. Don't take that. Okay. 
But what I'm getting at is the mental mindset of the children today versus the 60s. Now, probably all of us grew up in the 60s or the 50s, or maybe even the 70s. And it, where, where, where have we gone wrong? What have we done wrong to cause this mindset? And that's something, please, I'm not here to criticize you. I think you all do a great job. I wouldn't want you to, I'll be honest with you. I think you deserve more money you're getting. But this really concerns me. When I, I, I'll tell you where, and I'm, again, going off my topic. I have two Airbnbs. And I have a lot of young youth come there. And they want to talk history to me. They don't have a clue on the true history of this country. You ask them who was the president during World War II, they can't answer your question. And that's what concerns me. So I'm going to get a little around the edges a little bit with you, but please take it with love and understanding. Russian leader Khrushchev was quoted as saying, I'll put my glasses on for this, so I'm going to read you Americans are gullible. No wonder you won't accept communism outright. But we will keep feeding it to you in small doses of socialism until you finally wake up and find yourself communist. We won't have to take you. We won't have to fight you. We will weaken your economy and your youth. Mr. Green, I am so sorry, but I'm going to have to interrupt you. The time is up, and we have three minutes or more. Yes, sir. However, please come back and thank you for your input. Okay. And please give your comments to Miss Jameson, and we will get a copy of it. And we will get a copy of them. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address the board that had not signed up prior? We always ask. Thank you very much. We will now move on to our consent agenda. We have three items under the consent agenda. Is there a motion to accept a, a consent agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Our action items. A, the resolution recognizing February as Career and Technical Education Month. Ms. Ann Lincolnville will read the resolution. Certainly. Whereas economic and technological changes in our society are rapidly reflected in the structure and nature of today's workplace, thereby placing new and additional responsibilities on our educational system and... Whereas career and technical education provides Culpeper County youth with a pathway to post-secondary education and workplace readiness and is the foundation of a strong, well-educated workforce, which fosters productivity in business and industry and contributes to Culpeper County's leadership in the marketplace. And whereas Culp career and technical education gives high school students experience in practical, meaningful applications of core skills such as reading, writing, and mathematics, thus improving the quality of their education, motivating high achievement for all students, and giving all students leadership opportunities in their chosen careers and in their community. And whereas career and technical education <coughs> offers individuals lifelong opportunities to learn new skills, which provide them with career choices, expand earning potential, and job sat satisfaction, and Whereas the ever-increasing cooperative efforts of career and technical educators, career and technical administrators, and business and industry representatives stimulates the growth and vitality of our local economy and prepares students for careers in high-demand, high-wage, and highly technological skilled areas in a global economy, there, now therefore, be it resolved that the Culpeper County School Board hereby proclaims February 2023 as Career and Technical Education Month. Thank you, Ms. Sluggenbill. Is there a motion to approve the resolution? 
So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Thank you. The resolution is passed. The next item for action item is the new CTE course, Medical Assistant 1 and 2. Has everyone had a chance to read the um, Dr. Madam Brands. Chairman, members of the board, if I may, uh, Ms. to pull this uh, item up, please. Um, uh, Mr. Hallman and Ms. Rand uh, Richard Schlutz is here and Mr. Summerscales as well, representing instruction and in career and technical education. And a great segue from our resolution on career and technical education is the fact that we would like to add some additional courses or new courses. Uh, timing is such that we uh, seek your approval so we can get this in the program of studies for the registration process. I have other folks are here. We'd be happy to answer any questions you may have, but I think the item and the explanation is pretty clear to add uh, medical assistant one and two. Happy to, happy, excuse me, happy to answer any questions you may have, and staff is here as well. First, we'll take a motion to approve before a discussion. Is there a motion to approve the courses? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion or questions? <clears throat> I don't have a, a question. I just want to say that's really exciting. It's a good, it's some good progress. I do. So once a student receives this um, or goes through this program, what, what job does that work, what does he go into or she go into? You didn't think you were just going to sit there, did you? Mr. Summer Scales will come. <laughs> come on down. Good evening, Madam Chairwoman, members of the board. Thank you for the time. Uh, I believe the question was about specific industries. Uh, when we were Looking at this particular course, of course, we looked at our local workforce data as well, and one of those things that we looked at specifically were careers that this course specifically could lead to. Um, just some of the listings uh, for those, uh, medical secretary, phlebotomy, health services manager, medical assistant. Um, those are some of the many different pathways uh, that an MA could lead towards. Um, Exciting thing about all those industries is specifically for health sciences, those are growing at a vastly greater rate uh, than just about anything else uh, in the state of Virginia and locally. Um, most businesses are growing about a 6 or 7 percent rate right here uh, in Culpeper or also in Virginia. Uh, medical secretaries, growth annually about a 14 percent rate, phlebotomy about a 20 percent rate, health services manager about a 15 percent rate and medical assistant about a 21% rate of growth. So the ability to be able to plug some holes right here economically uh, in our own community uh, is very uh, apparent, and so uh, as it is with the rest of the state of Virginia. Thank you, Mr. Summerscales. Well, Are there any other questions, Ms. Brown? I don't have any questions. I just want to um, kind of reiterate. I, our staff looks at many things you particularly, Mrs. Lutz and Mr. Hallman, to find out what is the need for the community and for the children for their future. And this is an example of finding something else that we can offer that will take care of those things for us, which is exactly what the public expects. Um, so I am very excited to, to see us find another way uh, to help our kids uh, some of them to remain in the community and even if they get married and move away they'll have life skills they can use so outstanding job finding it and i have no problem supporting it thank you very much miss baker miss hutchins so when they finish these courses one and two they come away with a certificate that yes uh, an industry credential as could be if we are dual enrolled with the program, which we aren't that far down the line with it at this point. Uh, could be a, an MA, a medical assistant, uh, or um, a phlebotomy tech as well. Specifically, those could be the certifications that we work towards. So would they require additional classes at the community college, or that would take care of it because it would be dual enrolled? It depends on their uh, specific career pathway of okay. where they want to go. Um, with the healthcare industry in general, um, uh, our advice that we received from uh, UVA Healthcare as we were speaking to them about just exactly what it is that you need. Um, if we were going to be offering a course, what would you recommend? Which avenue would you say is the best entryway? Uh, their advice to us was more or less uh, any entry point would be a great entry point for us. 
uh, once you get them in with us, then we can get started in placing them in the, in the correct location and then from there also offer them the ability to continue their education after they begin with us as well. So uh, there will be, and there are entry level positions uh, specific to uh, certifications like phlebotomy tech uh, mm -hmm. that a student could enter right into. Many of our students who are interested in going to the health services field though are interested in something else. Um, so the, the nice part is that they could get their foot in the door with a service provider, start a career pathway, earn some money while they continue to maybe take classes at Germana Community College or at a four-year school. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I think it's a great addition to the cadre of classes at, at CTAC. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Summer Skills, please stay in just in case I have this wrong, but uh, members of the board, this, this now brings to three programs that are in, on the medical side. And it's certainly something that's huge for Culpeper as our community, that uh, two powerful forces in this community, healthcare and education. Uh, and I'd also say that you know, part of these entry-level courses in the medical field uh, give students the opportunity to start stacking those credentials and seek something that I learned a long time ago uh, from a hospital CEO, and that is uh, seek the top of the license. I mean, a student who starts this way, who could possibly become a doctor one day but this is starts that path on the medical field so this brings us to from having the nurse aid health care uh, technician side now this program and we have the emergency medical technician as well so uh, we, we've heard that from our community to grow those opportunities um, they have staffing shortages in all those areas as well so we think it's a good collaboration cooperation but but also just that notion of it's the beginning of that credentialing piece to start stacking those credentials and letting students see that they can earn those credentials and for employers to see, hey, they've met a benchmark somewhere. And that means they could probably meet another one and then another one. So uh, correct me on any of that, sir. Oh, absolutely correct. Okay. Any other comments for Mr. Summerscales? Thank you so much, Thank Mr. Summerscales. We have a motion, a second, and discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion unanimously carries. Thank you. Superintendent and staff reports. The superintendent's update. There's one more action item. Is there? I didn't see it. Okay. It's not online. Okay. To authorize the superintendent to enter into a contract for construction services for the Culpeper Middle School roof replacement. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Discussion? We all know? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And I would advise the board this is subject to the release of available funding. We have available funding, but that funding has to be released by the county. We will seek out what we already have in our CIP, plus some additional funding in this year's uh, fiscal year allocation for school construction funds. Those two items together should get us to that point quite comfortably in terms of what the bid was. So thank you for support on this item. Dr. Brad, do you have under number nine report, do you have anything else to add? with the governor's proposed budget. Okay, so thank you. We are moving on to the next section, a superintendent staff reports. Um, very briefly in terms of where we are with the, the, the governor's budget proposal. I was in Richmond today for a meeting. Um, their schedule changed a bit, so some of the finance information is tomorrow, which I am unable to go uh, attend in, in person, but we'll get that information afterwards. But we do know from the December 16th update uh, the governor has revised a number of things, but one of the items is still intact is the second half for the biennial budget of a compensation supplement for another 5%. Uh, and, and when you back out the school construction money that was in this year's spending plan from the state in the neighborhood of $3 million, you back that out and start without that funding, we're, we're looking in the neighborhood of $4.6 million new expenditures primarily as a result of that compensation sell, uh, supplement. However, before we get excited about $4.6 million new money from the state, 
we have to remember that that's for SOQ funding and that covers two thirds of our staff. Uh, a third, a full third or more is not covered by that amount. Plus additionally, we have seen that you will see in our discussions that uh, a number of positions and items have been added uh, out of ESSER. Uh, not that many, but some of those that we will feel very much need to be in the operating budget. So again, don't, don't lock me into that 4.6, uh, but that's a possibility. Um, again, that's the governor's proposal and the General Assembly will be rolling in to, to start looking at that and making additions to, and changes or deletions or whatever to that point. Uh, I will say something interesting that is in the budget that was not in the June budget is a, another version of a retention slash merit bonus. It is not anywhere near funded that we've seen in the past. It's just a little over $300,000. Our directive right now is that the VDOE and sc local school divisions will figure out what that looks like. And so I, I, I await um, information on, on what that looks like uh, because it certainly that's not a big chunk to roll into, have all of our staff receive any meaningful bonus whatsoever. Mm -hmm. If it's targeted to merit and performance, that in and of itself has some complications. So we will see, pay attention to that, and see if that ends up remaining in the governor's, what, in the, bu the, the budget bill because you know this process. Possibly good news or, or not, this is a, a short session of the General Assembly, many of you know that, um, but the short session of the General Assembly, we're hoping they work quickly so that they can get through the budget process, get out, and get out to do their business because why? Well, this, this fall, this no election cycle, all 140 members of the General Assembly are up for re-election or up for election. There'll be a number of retirements, a number of changes. That's a, a, a largely because the referendum that Virginia had to redistrict all of the uh, districts that both the Senate districts and the House of Delegates districts, um, the committee couldn't come to a conclusion. So that went over to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court hired um, a, a special master to develop these. And as it turns out, about 40%, and this is not me making this up, I learned this today, very interesting fact, about 40% of those 140 seats that are going to be up in the fall are in the wrong district. So they will be running against colleagues and or uh, same party, different party, maybe looking at do they relocate, do they retire, whatever. So uh, for that purpose, I think that they need to quickly make some quick and good decisions and, and not have too many education bills to, to stress over and get out there and start their uh, fundraising because they can't fundraise during the session. So get out there and do that so they can prepare whatever their goals are for November of 2023. So just a little civics aspect there that's an interesting year because not just because of the 140 uh, seats up, but because of the redistricting. Um, Yes, it will likely impact the budget, but we'll keep you up apprised of those changes. Happy to answer any questions you may be, you may have, but at this point, nothing super concrete on what may be coming to us from the state. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Brads. Mr. Shomo is not with us tonight. Will you be giving a finance uh, report? Yes, ma'am. That would okay. be me. Thank you, Ms. Hoover. I will attempt to fill in for Mr. Shomo. Um, let's see, I'm on and clicking. Am I clicking now? I'm clicking. There is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes, no. <coughs> so, so, a little lag in my click here. So. Wow. Okay, starting with, uh, we'd like to provide you with an ADM update. As of December, our, our count was 8228. That's down 37 students from our, our budgeted amount. Not a large amount, so, so we're not all that concerned about the potential in, uh, decrease in revenue. Uh, the state share, to, just for st straight basic aid, is about $4,000 a pupil. Uh, there are other categories that uh, will play into that, but uh, just an update on, on that aspect of where we are with enrollment. Because as you know, the major driver of our state funding is the enrollment figure. Uh, next page, just the revenue sources of this built budget of where the uh, $112 million coming from. 
just a, just a quick view of that, how that lines up in terms of our expenditures for the year. Uh, interesting in terms of thus far, our expenditures, how they've been running per month thus far. And in terms of just finishing December, we don't have December data. The last month that we have full data on would be November. So you have what we've, we've spent through November so far. And you can see from the, the chart, I won't, I won't point out those numbers, but you can see the graph. And then I'd say last but not least, uh, how we are progressing with spending the uh, proposed budget. Again, it's a work in progress as we spend down the budget. Uh, keeping in mind, you see a ginormous Okay, we're halfway through the year, we should be at half. No, remember, not necessarily, because you have uh, uh, fairly large accounts payable and June and July payrolls that come out after the school year. So that will come in, I won't say late, but that's how we pay on terms of, in, in terms of t um, 12 pays for our teachers who are on 10-month contracts and also for our 11-month employees and 12-month employees. So we have to hold that in reserve to make our, our June and July payroll. Uh, I believe that's the last slide. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about where we are right now. Things are rolling along, I would say, swimmingly. And um, again, happy to answer any questions you may have. I will attempt to. Are there any questions for Dr. Brads? Thank you, Dr. Brads. Our next report will be operations with Dr. O'Brien. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Brads. I'm happy to give uh, tonight's operations update just to see how we are doing in our department. Uh, one of the things that were accomplished over the winter break where we were able to get the hot water heaters in place at AG Richardson, and those are what they look like, which are nice, brand new and shiny and are already functional and, and operating as expected. Uh, we also replaced the rooftop units, three of them that were put in place. At CCHS, we've had the baseball field improvements continuing forward. They've also put some uh, in-ground sprinkler systems to help with that as well. That was coming from uh, Cavalier Baseball as they start to put those upgrades in place, which principally is the expanding the enlargement of the dugouts, which actually makes it more commensurable with that of Eastern Views. We did add additional parking, 10 additional spots down at transportation. Uh, it's really between the transportation office and the wrestling room, and it's been used, which also is some good news on the transportation side because I have more drivers and aides needing a place to park. So that's been uh, pretty significant down there to add that for us. On other items that we have in terms of facilities, we've received 206 work orders. We've completed 200 of them. We've done the train uh, controls upgrade. We are working with technology so that that can be done remotely so they don't have to set or adjust temperatures in person, uh, which is something we do through a VPN. And uh, we are planning to pave the parking pads for the electric buses down at the bus yard. And the reason why we're doing that is because we have these cables running along the ground. We don't want them in the gravel or possibly in water. Um, as, as mentioned, as Dr. Brad's mentioned, talking about pursuing the replacement of the roof, we've also awarded the HVAC projects, uh, which are going to be a big deal and are going to help a lot of the, the airflow systems at, Pearl, at uh, Culpeper Middle School of Farmington, as well as replacing the boiler at Pearl Sample. Food service, uh, the trend continues when we do that year-to-year -year comparison that we are down uh, when compared to last year, but this one actually was a positive, that it was 129,703, so it was more meals. However, when I look back in December of 2021, we missed a couple of days, so that's probably the reason why. Um, in addition, on average, I think the daily average is kind of the running total in the meals that we provide and you can see the daily average is down a bit as well over last month. But again, the trend with a la carte continues to be in popular. In technology, we're up to 80% of the cameras that we're looking at installing before the end of the year, so we're making good progress. 
the Pearl sample clock and PA system installation over winter break was done. And uh, it's kind of neat because you can actually adjust the bell sounds. And I know uh, Mr. Birch, the principal of Pearl Sample, is very excited about using different sounds other than the traditional bell sound uh, when, you know, having kids change classes. Uh, we also installed a new iBoss device that we're still kind of working the kinks out of and uh, has caused some delays in getting some of our internet services back up, but we continue to make progress on that front. Technology has 231 open tickets and it runs about 200 on average per month. So that's about where we expect it. In terms of transportation, we are meeting our staffing requirements, which I'm very cautious about saying. I knock on wood every time I say it. Um, and it is making a difference. It is impacting on our times and the service that we are providing. In addition, it's providing us the opportunity to do more of the quality assurance things that our director and our assistant director can be involved in. And what I mean by that is ride-alongs, uh, checking, doing spot checks on buses, and those kind of things are important just to make sure our drivers understand that they're also accountable for what they do. And following up on that quality assurance is gonna have that uh, more, more stringent oversight. Uh, we also have that new Synovia equipment, which is gonna upgrade our 3G GPS system to 4 and 5G, which is gonna help us immeasurably when it comes to things like the Stop Finder app. Uh, you know, a lot of parents are like, well, the bus all of a sudden disappears, and that's part of the issues we're working through. So that was shipped this last Friday and should be coming any day now. And we also have, um, we've posted revised routes because of our staffing being where it's at. We've uh, divided some of the longer routes and have tried to clean some of those up as well. Any questions? I know I went quick. Are there any questions for Dr. Ryan? Ms. Hutchins? Yes, ma'am. Um, the dugouts, the improvements, yes. that will be finished in time for our team to play? I believe it's supposed to be done by the summer. So, oh. yes, I would, I would think so. How is that going to in affect this, CCHS baseball? Uh, I, as I understand it, it's not supposed to impact them at all. Okay. That their timeline is supposed to satisfy that. And I, I'm sure Dr. Sadahol might know. Do you know the deadline on that, sir? I don't know the exact deadline. So I'm pretty confident it's gonna, they're doing really good work really quickly, so. And then a second question on transportation. Are, are we still having issues with um, students not being at the stop and drivers having to go back? Are we going back and picking up kids? Is that any we, better we than it was? We do have that issue um, and we will continue to have that issue. However, I know uh, Dr. Halk has assisted us in revising what we call the practice and policy in regards to if a student, the, the way the policy is worded is it kind of says that if a student has to be brought back to the school three times, then they get that, um, they get that consequence of being uh, kicked off the bus for five days, well, or up to 10 days. But now, we're, we're kind of changing the wording of that. If the bus, for example, has to be detoured, then we're gonna provide a, uh, an explicit warning uh, with the idea that we're communicating with the parents for the little things so they know that it is a problem for them not to be there when it's time to have their kids get off the bus. So we're, we're kind of improving on that front. So is it any better than when we started the school year? Is it the same number? I, I think it's the same. Okay. I think we're still running into the same. Um, and it's a matter of tabulating and keeping track of all those things. And, and sometimes it's, you'll hear on the radio, a driver will call in and say, hey, you know, little Jimmy's parents aren't here again. Can you call? And the school will say, yes, we're going to call. And they're calling. The bus is waiting. Next thing you know, Jimmy's mom comes out. And they're like, oh, never mind. Jimmy's mom's here. So do you count that or do you not count it? So we're, we're kind of being cautious at the same time, but we're, we're doing our best to figure out, yeah, that should count or not count. So there's a lot of uh, individual discretion when it comes to it. Thank yes, ma'am. Are there any other questions for Dr. O'Brien? There are none, Dr. All right, very good. Thank, Thank you, you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Board member reports, board member, our reports are there. Board member comments. 
Ms. Burnett. Um, I would just like to thank uh, Mr. Glick, um, principal of Farmington, for bringing his students in. That was a wonderful performance, and love to hear about your school. Um, I wanted to also thank SeaTech for their um, and uh, Ms. Lutz and Mr. Summerscales for your innovation in finding this uh, new course offerings in uh, medical assistance. Right? Yes, one and two certification. I think that's really going to benefit our community and our students moving forward. Their future looks brighter every day. Thank you. Ms. Stissley? Ms. Luckenville? Ms. Brown? Ms. Smith? Yes. <clears throat> I, I've said this once before, but when I first got on the board, um, I heard and I believed if we don't tell what's the good things that are happening and what is going on in our division, other people make up whatever. So I want to again thank Mrs. Hoover for what she's doing in the articles that she places and the information that is happening that she's not making up. She's letting everyone know and thank you and you're doing a great job of that and I just want to say thank you. Ms. Hutchins. Yes, thank you. Um, I too would like to thank our staff are constantly looking for new opportunities for our students, whether it's in CTEC or any other area, uh, to try to keep our educational system current, meeting the needs of our students and our community. Um, I would also like to thank the staff of Floyd T. Benz for coming in over the holiday and dealing with the broken pipe. They were there on Christmas Day, which is something that none of us would like to have done, but I thank you, uh, the staff for dealing with it and for being there and, and having the school ready to open for kids uh, when they return from the holiday break. So thank you all for what you do. Well, I would just like to thank everybody on the board and everyone in the audience and wishing everyone a really great new year. And we're off to a good start, so we'll make it a great year for everybody. Thank you. And we have our information items. The summary of our uh, committee reports are be can be found in board docs. The membership is also in board docs. The school board, oh, the school board recognition month is February 2023. It came again. Boy, that keeps coming around, I'll tell you. Employees Appreciation Week, School Support Staff Appreciation Week during National School Counseling, Counseling Week, February 6th through 10th, 2023. So that's coming up. Our future meeting dates, the Culpeper County School Board Capital Planning Committee is um, Wednesday, January 11th. The administration will be the following uh, Tuesday, January 17th. Culpeper County School Board business work session will be January 23rd at the Culpeper High School studio. Finance will be February 13th right here at the county admin office. And the talk about the budget for the Culpeper County School Board will be February 13th right here at the county admin office at 5.30 p.m. And the regular board meeting will be February 13th, 2023 at the county administration office. There are no more meetings. We will go into closed session. It's, um, Ms. Smith, would, would you read a motion to go into closed session, please? Turn the mic on. I move that the school board convene a closed session to consider the following personnel matters pursuant to the Code of Virginia 2.2-3711A1 the appointment of classified personnel, the transfer of classified personnel, the separation of certified personnel, the separation of classified personnel, the approval of long-term su substitute paraeducators for the remainder of 22-23, the approval of substitute teachers for 22-23, the approval of winter and spring coaching supplements for 22-23 CCHS, the approval of winter and spring coaching supplements for 22-23 EVHS, the approval of winter and spring coaching supplements for 22-23 CMS and Floyd T. Benz Middle School, and consultation with legal counsel and briefings by staff members or consultants pertaining to actual or probable litigation 
where such consultation or briefing in an open meeting would adversely affect the negotiating or litigating posture of the public body. For the purposes of this subdivision, probable litigation means litigation that has been specifically threatened or on which the public body or its legal counsel has a reasonable basis to believe will be commenced by or against a known party. Nothing in this subdivision shall be construed to permit the closure of a meeting merely because an attorney representing the public body is in attendance or is consulted on a matter pursuant to the Code of Virginia 2.2-3711A7. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Is there a second for the motion to go to closed session? Second. Thank you, Ms. Burnett. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. We can now go into closed session. Should I have a discussion? Uh,